say them I got envy me. Yo, 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 what up? Throwback Thursday. And so, I realized we got our own cult, our own cult audience that we have. Because this started in Corona when it started. Everybody was inside. Everybody was home. Know what I'm saying? Scared. Now they outside. Everybody outside. Not mad at them. You got that vaccine, you good. <laughs> if you don't, it is what it is. I mean, you know, you pressing your luck. Shout out to Rock and much finer vodka. Uh, I don't know how much of Rock I could drink because it seems like every day P. Diddy delivers another box of Ciroc. This is about supporting my brother. You know what I'm saying? But it's Throwback Thursday. You know, we've been having some real talk this week. Type of talk people can't handle. Real shit. Last night was amazing. It was like, you know, I'll tell you some real shit. I'll tell you some real shit. And all my shit guaranteed. You know, when they said I had the whack beard, it was right after I came out of the beard and barber convention. Shout out Pacino and Jay Mates. Can't make this shit up. And so yesterday I'm talking that shit with you. I'm telling you them stories. You know, sometimes we just talk that shit. Next week, next week, I, I, well, I'm thinking of something. I can't tell you. Hey, yo, success, what's up? And so next week, uh, I'm going to try to do something. But it's Throwback Thursday. I got an amazing guest, guest tonight. And I'm going to let their music speak for themselves. And you know what, hip-hop... We got some shit with us, right? So every Throwback Thursday, I can't believe I thought about it now, but I think every Throwback Thursday, I'm going to bring like a living legend of all time on here to rock. Next week is cool from Cool in the Gang. And so our industry, well, not our industry, because that's their industry. <laughs> so the music industry uh, has something called ageism. To where they feel like you got too old or you can't make them no money no more. Whatever the case have you. Uh, and so they try to push you out. And they've been doing this for years to people, to artists. And so you see the object is they get you young. You don't know too much. The minute you know too much where well, you got to get paid because you know your worth. Mr. Mauricio, what's up, my brother? They push you out. And so I told you all about the young, you know, the, the the major labels. They throw out a guy 26 and they tell him he's washed up. And next thing you know, he's 26 years old doing the uh, old school at noon tour. So with me, I'm about embracing the youth, the little Uzi Verts, the Kodak Blacks, the little Yachty's, the big Lottos, the youth. I bring them on here all the time, to, you know, and I'm about embracing the living legends, icons who built this motherfucking game for us. And so um, tonight I got a guest that single-handedly might have one of the greatest records ever recorded in music. A-L-B dot, B dot said old school. It's, ain't that what it is? They play the old school at noon. They play the old school at noon. I come from a generation that refused to let them do that to us. If you watch Nas just last year drop the album that won a Grammy. You see Jay-Z, entrepreneurship, Billy's, did he, did it? We refuse to let somebody do that or if we're old school at noon. But before us, they were letting them do that to them. And, it, and, and there's a sense of, you know, say you did get robbed, but in any case, you came from being dirt poor. And then the record label, you know, you're a millionaire now, or you, you up, you know, hundreds of thousands, and they telling you, this same person who gave you that money is telling you, yo, you old school, you washed up. What are you supposed to think? You washed up, you old school. And so... Uh, to me, I never believed that. You know, I have an ill story where 
You know, I was signed to Atlantic Records. I think I told you this before. I was signed to Atlantic Records. And I used to go in there. They had a poster of me from the lobby to like the seventh floor in Manhattan. Big fucking poster. Giant. So for my ego, for me being like I'm the illest, I used to walk in that office all the time thinking I'm the illest. Right? And so one album that they gassed me to put out, I put it out and went up against the same day. It came out fourth quarter against Jay-Z, uh, fucking Missy, uh, Mariah Carey. I knew we was going to lose. I kept telling them, yo, we're going to take an L. So we take an L. That album only goes gold. Uh, gold meaning a half a million copies sold. The album before that, I sold two million. So this is around the time T.I. just got signed to Atlantic. He sold two million. So they're giving me a speech about how T.I. is hot. I'm not hot. I'm washed up. And that didn't sit right with me. Me being a, me being a Leo, me having so much pride, I didn't like that. So I couldn't sleep that night. Uh, and I was staring at the ceiling. And I came up with a plan. I said, well, you know what, man? A guy from Trinity Ave, 1,000 projects. Half a million people buy my album. They still call me a failure. I said, maybe I should just go independent. Because at the time, independent was giving you $7 a record. So now if I sold a half a million records at $7 a record, that's $3.5 million. Do the math. And so I figured that out. I said, you know what? The next day I went back. I said, you know what, guys? You're right. I'm washed up. It's over for me. I'm the old school at noon. Uh, I want to go independent and make underground albums. I'm not even trying to sell music. You'll never hear me again. And sure enough, they was like, yeah, Joe, yeah, like pushing me out. No problem. We'll let you go. We'll release you. Uh, Couple of months later, I dropped Make It Rain, sold 4 million records. And uh, the rest is history. I've been independent ever since. And so my point is, I refuse to believe these people when they told me I was washed up. And I've almost been like the antichrist to the major label system. Because since then, I've been dropping smash hits. You know, I'm in the green. I'm not in the red. You know, a lot of guys, they take that money and they unrecoup. So you make three and a half million dollars if you go gold, you know. Uh, so that's great money. Um, but I never listened to these people. I've never listened to these people. Yo, be that. I never listened to these people and let them dictate what I could do. What I noticed is we all got money and money's green. And you can hire the same educated guys and girls. The best of the best to take your money to. And so I started working. I got my own radio team, my own video team, my own pro promo team, my own DSPs, my own publicists. And, and, and just built my own shit. Um, and so that just give you a history of how they do you. You know what I'm saying? How they do you in the rap game. Uh, me just coming on here, kicking it with you every night, you know, being a credible person like me, spitting game to y'all, uh, that's, that's a problem. It's, it's, it's been a problem, but it's too late. I don't know half the shit I done told y'all in a year and four months. I don't talk too much shit to begin with. So, you know, you're talking to the wrong guy. And so, let me see if my guys are on here, man, that just, uh... here, you know what I'm saying, and uh, enlighten the people, Throwback Thursday, give you a vibe, give you that talk, you know what I'm saying, it's the only spot where you can listen to legends kick it, and you feel like you're a fly on the wall, where you at the place, the scene of the crime, you know what I'm saying, 
Yeah, AB, make sure you tell your man I'm, I'm, I'm requesting him. Might be hard. Yo, Serge. I see you, DJ Serge. Serge in the building. Your Serge white van talk. You don't want to say too much white van talk because we'll be in a white van. Let's see. Send a request. And so everybody like that white van talk, but I'll give you a little bit of everything. You know what I'm saying? Hey, yo, Mayo, what's good? Nice to have you back. Mayo, I haven't seen you, but that's on yo, y'all. Yo, yo Mayo, I haven't seen you in a while on here, man. You've been, uh, you been out there, huh? You been out there. And so, I'm trying to reach my guy. Yo, A.B., tell your man, get on the ones and twos. And so, you know, it is what it is. And um, and so the game, that's just the way the game is. And then, you know, it's the same way. Sad, man, I watched this for years and years. That's why I tell you, the only thing, whether it's the hood, whether it's the rap game, whether it's whatever, unfortunately, the only thing these people respect is the bag. Rasha Belhasa. Salam alaikum, my brother out there in Dubai. I'll see you soon. I think I'm coming out there in August. I'll be in Dubai in August. The only thing these people respect is the bag. That's it. Otherwise, you can forget it. So he try to play you. You was hot. You ain't hot right now. You as good as your last hit. They try to play you. It's a and here come Fat Joe. He always looked like he he got the bag. He always smelled like he got the bag. Why do we love Jay Z so much? He got the bag. Why do we love Diddy so much? Oh, you love to hate him. He got the bag. Fifty Cent. He got the bag. Now I just told you three, four rappers right now. They got the bag. It's, it's 10,000 other rappers. But if I start mentioning you some names, you'd be like, yo, what the fuck? Yo, this, it is what it is. You know why the Kardashians uh, became so successful is because we live in a materialistic society. These women are beautiful. They independent. They got their own big ass houses and fly sexy shit. They own trips and so we infatuated with the bag and they won't respect unless you got the bag so that's why i work so hard to get the bag so they can't tell me shit they say what you want i'm sitting up in there like this because i know i don't give a fuck what you coming with i'm sitting up in there like smelling amazing the flyest new shit on, the watches, the diamonds is hitting, the coloring in the fucking Rolls Royces is hitting. You can't tell me shit. Like, I'm walking out of that because you got to respect the back. And that, I always knew that. I always knew that. Even me, when I, when I didn't have it, I would hang out with, with Bone Thugs and Harmony. And happy birthday to Faith Evans. Uh, You know, Happy birthday to the queen. She's amazing, amazing artist. Uh, one of the greatest legends of all time. I know it's her birthday. I saw her husband, Stevie J, posting her up today. But, um, you know, it fucked me up one time because I was with Bone Thugs and Harmony. And shout out, happy birthday to Flesh Bone. I was with Bone Thugs and Harmony, but I ain't have as much money as them. I mean, well, success. And they sold 30 million records. And I was sitting down, and I saw them getting taken advantage of. And I knew they should have made more money. But because I didn't have the bag at the time, I felt like they weren't respected from me. Big mistake. I should have spoke up. Mafio, what's up, Mafio? Love you, brother.
I keep requesting AB if you tuned in. And so it's like, that's what it is. So you got to maintain. I never got mad at nobody faking it till they make it. I never got mad. Yo, yo. Kenny Burke, the living legend. How you doing, Kenny? I can't hear you. I can't hear you clear. Okay, now I don't know what's going on with the volume thing here. Yeah, you sound audio. good now. You sound good now, Ken. That's good? Yo, Ken, let me tell you something. You told me your age today, and I said I want to be like you. Man, you look so fucking great right now, Kenny. I mean, let, let me tell you something. I'm not lying to you. I'm not hyping you, man. You look fucking great. I used to think my Uncle Dan was the best looking older <laughs> guy. You know, he never smoked cigarette, never smoked weed, never drink. No, he no. got that skin. Kenny, you got him beat, man. Well, listen, let me get some light on the subject because we want to make sure that we really do <laughs> Yo, Kenny. Yes, my brother. Let's, let's, play him, let's play him that song, that song. Oh, so Let's we're get live. to it. We're actually rolling. We rolling? We rolling. We on TV. We, we on TV. Oh, hold up a minute. Wait a minute. Hold up. What are we doing? <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Yo, Kenny, man, that is one of the greatest songs in the history of music. Mm. And to mm. say that yeah. is an understatement. Mm. That is one of the greatest songs in music. Mm. Did you know when you created that song? Did you know it was going to be a monster? Did you, when you recorded it, when you played it for your best friend, when you played it for your family, did you know that that record was going to be one of the greatest records of all time? Absolutely not. And anyone that they do, everybody likes to take credit after the fact. You know, this, you know how it goes, Joe, right? But what I did know is that it was special because the way it came to me, I knew it was coming from the Almighty himself. And I don't say that in any kind of, you know, just putting it out there. You How know? did it come to you, Kenny? Break that down to us. How did that keep rising to the top? Because if we just love the groove, we think it's Harlem, we think it's this, but it's really a positive message in the whole song. Like, well, how did it come to you, Ken? 
Let me just say this. See, like what was happening is so when I heard the bass line, I said, okay, this is coming from straight up. Okay. And then when I went to the change. Then I said, uh oh, we're on to something. But you know, how could I know anything before there was even sampling and hip hop was just and rap was just getting off the ground. And yeah. there was no samples, there was no, you know, hip hop was just getting started. That's 81. How many years uh was hip hop around when this record came out? Uh, I would say eighty-two it came out. It was in Philadelphia. When I recorded that, and I, and we was getting you know some vibes that it was starting like maybe in, I would say I was hearing some vibes like in eighty eighty one, about eighty, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, let's so around the same time, the birth of hip hop, you know, getting professional and making records and all that. That's when this record came out. I would say that's accurate, right on the cusp of it. And what an amazing time, man! So you, so so you got this number one hit at the same time that this art form, hip hop, is exploding. You going neck to neck, concurrent, and and so you doing venues and you seeing other rappers, or the rappers wasn't able to do those venues yet. I wasn't even performing. I was just producing at that time. I did that album for RCA. It was top forty B and. RCA dropped the ball. I said, I'm out. I'll just start producing and I'll just keep myself out of the limelight as we talked earlier, right? As we talked earlier. So, you know, I felt that at that moment in time, it was something that was not really, it wasn't really given the right attention and it could be timing also. You got to be fair. Timing you know, is. It's I'm a special time in my life, right? I just finished writing my book. And, uh, you know, I was very ambitious, right? Growing up in the projects, I always wanted more. I think 50 Cent beat me to the uh, slogan, but it was either get rich or die trying, mm. right? Mm. And I knew I was crazy. I knew I was one of the wildest boys in the Bronx at the time. Mm -hmm. But I had to get to the bag. And I was very, very ambitious. And I never forget the first bands I ever sat in was a guy named Scarface Steve. He had a scar here. He's still alive. He's out there. Pure energy, living legend. He went to jail for like 20 years, 30 years. But I sat in, he had a red uh, wide body kit bands with the gooseneck, the system. And I don't know if he timed it, but the second I sat in the chair, he picked me up from my projects and I, I couldn't believe I was in the bands. I wanted everybody to see me. Right. And he right. pressed play and he played Dougie Fresh's version of Keep Rising to the Top. That is the first song I ever heard in any luxury car in my wow. life. Wow. 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 What yeah. a connection. The connection. You know, and you're bringing up 50, who is one of our beloved brothers out there, along with you. And he gave me the lowdown of how it affected his life and how it was a hustler's end. And that everybody that for energy and for inspiration. And that's what was my reward, because that's really what I wrote it for. The lyric. Mm. Body with a pen trying to say something cute or trying to say something. That from my heart, my faith, my training. Because, brother, you got to know, you look at a brother who was an FOI on 116th Street back in 1972. Wow. So you was in the FOI in 72? Yes, sir. Islam. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wow. And then you turned into music. You know, it's funny, right? Because, you know, what I do in my off time, right? I sit here, you know, I just discovered on, on COVID, I discovered, I see you way more computer savvy than me, but I discovered YouTube. 
So I get on my YouTube and I watch like Soul Train Awards, you know, the old school performances and all that. And I noticed, I seen a show today where uh, some artists were singing like some, some like, let, let's not say raunchy, but let's say, you know, sexy. You right. Know, thotty music. Right. And then I'm watching in the audience, Kirk Franklin made sure he wouldn't dance to that. Even though he knew it was the hottest shit. When they put the camera on him, he ain't dancing to it because, you know, he got to be church. He got to be this and this and that. So you coming from Ephraim, they what was it like you making music that, I mean, you had to rock this shit. This, you had to rock this at the fever, at the all the spots where all the drug dealers, all the hustlers is at, all the Harlem spots. I mean, what was like that for you making the record? Or to you, you telling me, yo, Joe, this is a godsend record. Yes, yes. I was already in business since I was 12 mm -hmm. with my family, The Five Stair Steps. A song called, ooh, how things are gonna get easier. So that's that how I started the show. I I listen to 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 your family's record all day today. They are fucking okay. amazing, amazing. Thank you. Thank you. I Thank listen you. to their Thank music you. all day today, and I'm wow. like, damn. Because I'm not gonna lie to you, I wasn't up on them. I knew the music, but I didn't know who they were. And I so and so I knew I was having you on. I said, let me listen, and it's it's fucking amazing. This is the type of music you can hear all day. What was it like growing up? Because you guys were the original, like Jackson Five, the original family group that exploded. I mean, tell me about that. Ooh, child, things are going well, to get easier. Well, you know, we we were blessed to have a mother and father who encouraged us. We were beaten on. Fans. We're from the project in Chicago. That's where we're from, Chicago. So we came up humble, you know, just like everyone else, you know. And parents encouraged us to sing. So we won a talent show in Chicago at the Regal Theater, which is equivalent to the Apollo Regal yeah, Theater. Yeah, I know the Regal. Regal, right? And we won the show. And guess who we beat? Who was on the show also? Who Our was on the show? Jackson Five. The Jackson Five. So they were on that show and y'all beat them out. Wait, oh, it wasn't even close. So here's so how. It, it, did you know? Did, did you watch him perform or you stood in the back and was like, ah, right, this is ours. We're going. X. So process of elimination. You know what I'm saying? So you don't know who went. You, you're not watching everybody. You come and do the thing when it's your turn. So I never saw them perform that night, but they were on the show. But here's the thing about the relationship. We were always like this, man. No competition, wow. no kind of nothing going on. But father and their father, Joe Jackson, were, were, uh, were friends. And we gave them a lot of where they became who they are. And if you, they would tell you. They looked up to us all over. So those stories are real. Those stories, you know. Yeah, I know you. I know y'all guys were signed to Curtis Records. Curtis May Curtis Mayfield's records. Did you did you work with him hand in hand? How did you get signed? How did y'all get signed to Curtis Mayfield Records? Though like, we I won mean, one of the greatest. We good question. We won the talent show in Chicago at the Regal. Uh, our father a detective in Chicago, mm. met Fred, who was one of the original impressions. He came by our home, sang one of our hit songs, World of Fantasy. For all of our fans that are from that era, they will know that song, World of Fantasy. And Fred Cash heard eight bars, right book, and he stopped us. And he said, let me put in a call. And he heard us. And then he ushered us off right to Curtis Mayfield's apartment in Chicago. Quick. So mm. we thank Curtis. And you got to remember Curtis Mayfield for Chicago when equivalent of a big party or a from the Detroit side, right? 
So there was no one bigger, Joe, in Chicago than Curtis. So can you imagine? Nah, ain't nobody bigger. Did we talk can about a motherfucking giant? We talk right. about. Yeah, 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 yeah. We talk about. We talk about a goat. We talk about a Curtis that, Mayfield. We're not talking about no no. This is a no. big boy. And we're children, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 years old. This is our the, who we look up to. So we went on, and Curtis had a style. He said, uh, all right, baby, I think you're ready. We'll book the studio in two weeks. We walk into the studio, Studio A at Universal Studio in Chicago. There's a 34-piece orchestra in there. Mm. So the orchestra, she said, oh, wow, who was that for? And he said, babies, that's for you. So when you're recording, that's 65. Everything is done. Yes. Ain't no overdub. Those songs here from those days were recorded in one or two tapes. Orchestra, rhythm section, vocal, all at the same time. So that was a heck of an experience to get into the industry that way. See it like you know, even me, I feel like we fake. Like, like me as a hip hop artist, and trust me, I know music. And mm. I be feeling like we fake because back in the day, I tell Cool and Dre all the time, and, and, and Cool and Dre, super talented, my brothers. But I tell them all the time, yo, we need like an orchestra, we need a whole band. I've never been able to work with like that. Like, we always work with producers, sample beats, incredible, but. I never had the opportunity to work in one of these. Like back in the day, you see Quincy Jones, they playing different instruments at the same time. I feel like that's the real music. That, 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 that's where the soul comes from. And I've never been able to do that. Well, if I may say something, the first statement about not the, maybe not having the authenticity, I had a good friend. And his name is Preston Middleton. He's from Houston, and he worked with Teddy and Guy back in their day. Um, to get into how things were crafted. With them. okay, I wanted to learn, so I had an MPC six, and he began yeah. to show how beats and the little snippets and samples work. So let me be the first to say this, my brother. Think about a black man or a black woman when it comes to dating. Because I don't dare anybody to play an instrument to be able to do what you do. Oh, that's crazy. See, that's all right, all, I see what you're saying. That's all what? it is. That's all it is. That's all that is. You can't take nothing away from it. Because all this stuff, with, man, you're taking a, a crate of albums and picking stuff. Who can do that? Yeah, pretty oh, amazing. Shout out to my brother Diamond D. Diamond D's the guy who discovered me, you know, digging in the crates. And I told him I was going to have you on. And he told me to ask you this question. He said, yo, ask him, does he know that the Don't Change Your Love is one of the most sampled drum patterns in hip-hop history? They even sampled in the hip-hop array no, by Naughty by Nature. Yep, yeah, yeah, I know. I know. I keep up with my business. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> and, and, and I swear you look like that. You know, let me give you the breakdown. So, Ted Smooth, who uh, DJs here on my show every Friday, uh, thank God for Ted. He be rocking everybody. He tells me he got Kenny Burke performing at his birthday. So, that was like the gimmick. That same day, my brother Khaled was calling me telling me he's shooting a video down here in Miami with Justin Bieber and the biggest shit. And so me, I'm always loyal. That's my thing. So I said, Ted, I'm going. But I'm not going to lie. I went to support Ted, but I really went to see you. Right? Wow. I, I'm going to be totally, totally honest. Because all these years, I've been loving your music, and I never got to see you perform live. And when I got there... I see you, we taking pics, we bugging out. Shout out A B. And but I, I whisper like an hour later to tell your tag, yo, when Kenny Burke going on. He said, Oh no, he performed already. I said, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> like, like, oh what? 
He said he performed. I said, hell no. Like, I came here for historic shit. Like, I came <laughs> to see some history. Yes, sir. Fame shit. Yes, sir. And so I whispered at you. And I said, listen, it was not, it was rocking out there. Everybody was like, I said, yo, Kenny, man, they say you performed already, man. I came to see you perform. And you was like, yo, I said, yo, you got to do it again, man. There's no way. Mm -hmm. I got to see history. Yes, like, sir. Yeah, I've seen so many moments in history. I love it. Right. I already know now that, uh, you know, we get no rewinds and no do-overs. So if Kenny Burke is rocking, I got to be there because I can't see it tomorrow. It's yes, a done deal. Yes, sir. So I'll tell you that. You'll be like, yo, Joe, no problem. I'm going to do it. No problem. You leave, right? I wait five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And I'm like, holy shit, Kenny Burke curved me. He, he fucking curved me. He told me he was going to do it and he broke the fuck out. Ah, yo, he did some shit. <laughs> How the fuck he leave? Yo, I was, yo, I was sick. I was so mad. So I leave. Later on, I speak to you and you tell me, yo, Joe, I went to the bathroom. It was a long line. I came back to rock again, and I thought you left. See how stuff happens. And if we didn't have that conversation, you see how beefs can get stuck. Not saying it would have been a beef with us, but, you know, that's how things get misunderstood because somebody said, brother, look, I went through the crowd and I had about four or five people with me and by the time we went to the restroom it was a line so they sent us down where the folks are cooking to their restroom and then I was like okay let's go where's Joe I said oh man Joe must have he split on me <laughs> <laughs> oh he's no see how it's going no but listen beloved now, that happened for a reason. Because you know what? I hear you got a birthday party coming up in August. Oh, yeah, yeah, my birthday. But you know, it's not. It's, it's, it's private. Maybe we'll film it and put it on the show, but it, it's private. But you know, every year I throw an ill. Last year, COVID messed us up. So I went with my family, Callis family. We went to Turks and Caicos at the big house. But every year I throw like an ill party, like every year. So in August, I'm definitely inviting you, and you're going to be the first person on the stage. And I'm, I'm going to try to bring maybe Bobby Brown. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get crazy. Right, Stephanie right. Mills, you know, it's going to be right. some shit where right. we all fly. And you always fly. I wanted to ask you a question, because every time I hear keep rising to the top, I hear, oh, nah, boom, 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 boom. And so, who had the re <laughs> Tell me the story behind All Night Long and Keep Rising to the Top. Is there something there, or am I bugging out? No, you are, you are right on point. What's happening is, I was in Philadelphia at Sigma Sound Studios recording it, and Rick James did the um, the arena there. What was that arena in all oh, back in the day? Anyway, so my partner at the time, Chappie Johnson, he and Rick were friends in the Motown days. He jumps in the limo and he thought it was a good idea to share with Rick what we were doing. He played Rising to the Top. And then the next thing you know, you got the original bass line, bo -dum, bo -bo -dum. Boom, boom, then you got bing, bo day, bo do, babe, bo day, boom, bing, bo day, bo day, bing. Even with flutes, even with the flutes. So here is how, how your brother looks at things, okay? This is how I look at things. The copyright laws were based on melodic structure within a certain amount of bars. Eight bars, then would be an infringement. But right. what knew, Rick knew, and I knew, and this was all that was important is, you know, that old saying, flattery 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, your imitation is a form of flattery. Right. So sometimes it's not necessary to make a fuss over something when you know that you inspired someone and they know that you inspired them. But we've all been inspired by someone. Hey, listen, yo, Kenny, let me tell you something, man. I don't have albums and records that I've played to my best friends. I'm talking about my brothers, mm -hmm. people I love, mm -hmm, people mm -hmm. I worship, mm -hmm. and played it for them. And two weeks later, her records that sound the same way with the same guys on there with the this. Right. I've, it happened to me several of times, several of times. And so I know that, you know what I mean? That is too powerful, too, too pos uh, 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 positive, I mean, you know? And, and so there's a reason why every time I hear keep rising to the top, I hear all night long. That's a joke for a moment, guys. If it went over your head, uh, keep rising to the top. His partner played it for Rick James, living legend in the limo. Like, yo, check out what my brother Kenny got coming out. And then all of a sudden, uh, oh, nah, but it's the same shit played a little different. Let me throw something in there, okay? There's two, two ways that your music can be bid on. Somebody can bite on it. There's two ways. First way is somebody could just outright try to to go there and, and take from you. But a lot of times it's not all deviant behavior. Sometimes people don't even remember. They, oh, I hear a month from now, and you know, you, you, you really might think it's your idea. I mean, that can happen. But in this case, it was clearly rushed to the studio and put this dog down because I knew that it was a hot baseline and what he had there and was famous and notorious for knowing how to extract and take a little bit from folks. They made a yeah, you know, we all get in, we all get inspired, Kenny. Yeah. Like, we, I mean, you know, even when I did my biggest record, Lean Back, I was inspired by the Jamaicans when they was doing their dances, a rock away, and and, and 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 all that. That's what made me think of that hook. They, they was signal the plane. They was doing all this shit. So I said, let me do something where you could dance to. You know, everybody gets inspiration. You know what I mean? So everybody gets inspired. Uh, what what was one of your, 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 I mean, I just know you had to have had performed this record in some super fly shit. What, what, was, what, what was the place, cause, cause to us in the hood, that's a hustler's anthem. Mm -hmm. That's 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 Harlem. That's Willie Burger. That's rooftop. That's that's the golden days of Harlem, you know. And 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 so, what was one of the flyest parties that you performed that, you know, uh, uh, that you was like, yo, this is some shit. I'm gonna tell you where it happened for me. I was mm -hmm. I was in London. Mm -hmm. Rising started just just the arpeggio, the little tingling sound that starts it, and the whole building just went into a. Oh! <laughs> London. So no, brother, that was crazy. It was crazy because you're going overseas and getting that love getting that love. Yeah, 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 something like that. You know, I go, uh, you know, I've been in all type of shit, man. I, I was telling my brother Nori the other day about some crazy shit. Nor, Nor, you know, I said, they paid me a lot of money to go perform in Dubai one time, right? Right. And so when I get there, it's in the sexiest place. It's food a mile long. They must think Fat Joe, like, really eats. So they had Chinese, Indian, this, that, whatever you could think of. It was like, feed the fat guy, make sure he's good. They got food for like a thousand people. It's just four of us. 
Right. And uh, so this is a true story. So I get out there to perform, and when I perform, it's the most beautiful flowers all over. Look, they spend a million dollars on this city, right? And when I get on stage, there's only like eight people, right? And so they sitting around the tables watching. So I'm like, I'm feeling weird. Like, you know, it's only eight people. And then uh, it was a girl's birthday. I did my song, What's Love? And she got up and said, please do us love again. <laughs> right? So now I did this shit. But I, I felt like a cheap whore. I felt like she had my price. She owned me. She could tell me what to do. That was a weird feeling for me. I'd rather perform for a bunch of people than to get a big check for five, six super rich people that's like, yo, do it again. I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. You know what I'm talking about, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. No, that's I felt like a cheap or even though they paid me a lot of money, even though they I was like, damn, man, like do they run me like that? Do they like did they pay me to run me and go, please? What love once again? Well, well, at the end of the day, it is it is it is part of that, isn't it? Because that's how that's how they roll, that's their world. And what do they really know about what we're doing? Really? Really. Yeah, you know, man. they know you're they know you on top of the game, so they want who's on top of the game so that they can show off. And now, let me say this. We're talking about character and kind of thing. And, and this is important because at the end of the day, I believe in checks and balances. That's mm -hmm. what one of the say. There's no checks and balances. And people don't get checked when they do dumb. You know what I'm saying. I won't mm -hmm. use the word. People, while we're here now, make silly comments. I saw some things going down with you, my brother. What's silly? All about yeah, my man, y'all. Listen, yeah, y'all. Listen, it, yo, Kenny. I'm right too now, sexy it, for these people, man. Wait, I, I mean, I'm telling you, your kid, your kid. I told yeah, yeah. him yesterday, I'm narcissistic. You messing with? <laughs> you messing with, yo, Kenny? Do you see people my age? They got no teeth, man. Are you crazy? You're going to diss me. They look at the ice. They look at the Christian Dior. They say, oh, the beard. Let's go at it. But guess what? They diss my beard after I had just talked at a barber convention. The number one barbers in America were in there. And I was talking to entrepreneurs. And I met the greatest barbers. And they showed me their work on pictures, on Instagram, on this. So when I get back with my brother, Rich the Barber, I say, yo, Rich, I need that shit tight like your body the barber. Or Pat, he make my shit right. They try to clown. Let me tell you something, man. It's social media. They always win. These guys are crazy. And, and, and we got to be thick skinned. Oh, no, no doubt about it. But see, see, here's the thing. Like, even while we're doing this, people are clowning, clowning, I get it. I understand the concept. However, it's always going to be someone who wishes they were in shoes that you're a humble brother. See, I already, just a friend, I could feel your spirit. Humble brother. Mm -hmm. But the problem is sometimes we pay a hard uh, price. Pay a price. The price of fame. Right. There's a reason why that's a quote. The price of fame. That's right. And that's so, right. you know, when you're famous, you know, 50 Cent told me there's no sympathy for winners. Mm. No sympathy for winners. And then my brother Nori told me there's more losers than winners and the losers try to stick together. Mm. Wisdom. Wisdom. <laughs> That's what. Where's the, where's the, yes, yes. Yeah, Kenny. You know, so we just start, we we enjoy life. That's right. We, and we, we enjoy every minute. I can tell you enjoy every minute. When I see you, you always fly. Versace yeah. shit on. You got to, your your joint. I mean, you you always fly. Thank you. Like I said, I want to be like you Brother. because you look incredible. 
Thank you. You look great. You look healthy. Thank you. Um, and thank you for coming tonight. And I look forward to seeing you at my birthday party, my brother. We'll set it all up. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much because for me, I keep it real. I know why there's a Kenny Burke. There's only me because of people like you, my brother 50, and all of the beautiful fans. They're the ones who make us who we are. That's a fact. They love you. And let me just to say, LL sampled that. Mary J sampled that. Jeremiah, Ty Dollar, Heavy D, Snoop Dogg, Pete Rock, CL Smooth. I'm Biggie sample your record. I mean, this thing is, um, th this been feeding the hip hop community for a long time. And let me get one more question out of you, Kenny. This, this is a good sure. question I just thought, sure. of, right? Sure. One more question is, you know, some, some old school artists, they don't agree with artists sampling their music. And, and, so, and, and, and so they won't let you sample their music. You, let these artists sample your music because you knew this would open new lanes, bring awareness to your original song, and open new lanes of currency for you. Uh, uh, how did you know that? And why do you think some old school artists don't want nobody to touch their stuff? Because they don't understand math. Ooh! Woo! That's the hardest you said tonight. They don't understand math. This is a new generation. It's a whole nother mind game. It's a whole different way of approaching things. Uh, a curse word 50 years ago was not what you would do. But everybody cursed. Mm. Just wouldn't say it. The younger generation just said, listen, it's real. And they put it out there just to make it in your face. If you do it in behind closed doors, why can't we say it? So I embraced, because oh, at the end of the day, whether 40, 50 years from now, we're gone. It's not going. So my, my thing is this don't take yourself so serious. <laughs> Hey, yo, Kenny, I love you, man. Thank you for coming. Love to you show. back. Thank you All again, brother. This one of my All favorites. My brother. Peace and out. And this time, I got to tell you, you don't know who I know. I just have to say it because you don't know who I know. And all these years, you've been hearing this song, The Rising to the Top, and everybody sample it. And you love this song, but you ain't really know about Kenny Burke like that. You, if, and if you did, you ill. And he deserves the praise because he's amazing. Okay? And he said they don't know math. He's right. Because at the end of the day, look, you go to a barbershop, there's one guy who cuts your hair all the time. He's making great money. You go to a restaurant, that chef is incredible. But that chef can't be at 20 different places. Shout out to AB for hooking this up. That chef can't be at 20 places. So you can't. See, the way people really get rich is the art of duplication. There's a reason why you walk in McDonald's and the fry is always over there. And it's a franchise and they run it the same way. Because you're able to own 20 McDonald's and all 20 be making money while you sleep. So Kenny Burke realized, he said, hey, my song is great, but I'm going to let Biggie sample it, Dougie Fresh, Fat Joe, 50 Cent, whoever, and I'm going to keep making money off this song 20, 30 different ways. And when those records blow up, he still makes money. When people want to sample that and use it for a uh, movie or TV, he makes money. Great guy, Kenny Burke. Listen, guys, y'all don't know who I know. Let your darkest moments bring your most clarity. This was a throwback Thursday to remember. Uh, put God first, man. Have faith in good and bad times. Trust in God. 
Without God, there's nothing. Believe me when I tell you. Uh, e. Philly, I don't love you. I worship you. You're my brother, one of my best friends. You're the true definition of somebody. Well, now we've been together 25 years, but you're somebody that I ain't grow up with since kindergarten, since the cradle, but that I trust you as if you're my own blood. And so just want you to know, and E. Philly's family, his wife, everybody, I love E to the wheels fall off. He's a special guy. Shout out to Philly. My love for Philadelphia came, Germantown, all of Philly because of E. Philly. So when you used to see me on the corner out there with Allen Iverson or Katino Mobley or with Rashid Wallace or whatever, it was because E. Philly, my brother, put me on to the streets of Philly. I love you, E. Enjoy your day. I know you're with your granddaughter. I love you too much. We the biggest in the game. See you tomorrow. Peace.